Good morning and welcome to Live with Chris, an interview podcast where we can learn and grow together. I am your host, Chris Oviedo, and I want to thank you for sharing the next hour with me. Today, we will be talking about oral health, how wearing your mask may be influencing your oral health, what you can do to stay healthy, compliant, and safe, and the dental clinic at Howard Community College. And no better person to have this conversation with today than one of our dental hygiene program faculty, Bridget Holmes, who brings over 21 years of experience in the dental field. Studies suggest that 95% of Americans consider their oral health a very important part of their well-being. However, when looking at their oral practices, findings suggest that approximately 40% of Americans ages 5 through 44 don't go to the dentist regularly, have untreated dental caries, do not floss, and keep their toothbrushes longer than it's recommended, amongst other things. I'm sure I'm hitting one of those at least. I know the toothbrushes. I tend to forget those. Um, the American Dental Association says that our mouth is a window into the health of our body, and it touches every aspect of our lives. Bridget, I want to start our conversation with this idea. I want to start exploring, you know, this concept of seeing our mouth through a wider lens, seeing our mouth as, you know, this window into our health. I don't know that it's something that comes inherently or that we, you know, even think about that. How is it that opening our mouth can show us what's happening inside the rest of our body? So thank you for joining me this morning and welcome to our show. Oh, thank you for having me. I always love talking about teeth and the mouth and all that good stuff because that's my field. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. So no, I'm excited. Overall. I'm excited to have this conversation because, um, you know, like I said, it's it's just we don't think about this. We, we think of oral health separate from health. And I think that what, mm -hmm. you know, what I want to challenge everybody um, or what I want you to really challenge us all is, you know, to, to look at this idea of oral health, of, of looking at our mouth and, and maybe realizing that it holds <laughs> secrets about the rest of our health and that maybe we need to connect with it a little bit more and, and, and bring it into that idea of health as a whole. Yeah. So think about your mouth is the start of your digestion. So whenever you're putting something into your mouth, anything, a piece of food, drinking water, that is starting our digestive system. So we're ultimately using our teeth to chew the food and the teeth are actually designed in certain ways with the uh, tooth morphology of how they're, they actually look to help us in that process of pushing the food back to the back of our mouth and starting that digestive process. So as dental hygienists in the, pro in the program, we teach students in general out in the public too, in the dental profession, we are looking in the mouth and we can see certain things happening potentially that are going on with the rest of the digestive tract in the body. Um, and so it's a window into that process, right? Of what we're putting in our mouth actually helps with sustaining our body, health, wellness overall. And so nutrition is a big component of what we teach students and what we go out in private practice and, and in general, we're looking at as well today. So it's amazing. Who would have thought our mouth was connected to our head, which is connected to our body, right? So we're exploring that <laughs> yes, a lot more fun. today. <laughs> it's, it's I, I love that you're bringing it, you know, so real like that, because it's true. I mean, we think of it. It's, it's right there and we use it all of the time. It's one of, I think it's one of the organs that we use the most or we're at least aware of the most. However, we don't think of, you know, the, the upkeep and the maintenance and the importance. And I said it, you know, in our intro admittedly today that I think I, you know, many times like I don't, I don't even know what's the recommendation for how long I should keep my, my toothbrush, right? So I think that's why I say I, I really do think that I am one of those people because it's not something that I necessarily think about. It's like I have one of those, um, the ones that I usually um, have, and I, you know, going to make myself very vulnerable here. And Bridget, you're welcome to correct me if I'm doing this wrong, but I, I, I buy a soft brush, but I buy, I buy the one that has the, um, the battery and has the spinny little things. And so, you know, that's the one that I use. And when do I change it? When it stops spinning. So, you know, so, so 
you know, okay. help us educate ourselves maybe with that, right? Like, um, what's, is there like a right type of toothbrush and, and, you know, waiting for the little, for, for the battery to die out? Is that the right time frame or should I be getting <laughs> one sooner than that? So it's awesome questioning. And honestly, every individual is different, right? With how we use it. Are we putting extra pressure on it? Um, so let's start from the very beginning of what you're mentioning, right? With a battery operated toothbrush, it sounds like you go and you buy it, use it, it's battery operated and it's got soft bristles on it. Traditionally, you're looking at on the market right now, they say about every three months, you need to change your toothbrush, whether it be a manual toothbrush that you're just brushing your teeth with or an electric or battery operated toothbrush, you're changing the head or the full component every three months. For some people, though, we will notice that your bristles, they'll start to spry out. And if that's the case, it's time to change it. And a lot of brushes today come with little blue or green uh, areas that stick up and they'll start to lose their color. And that's an indicator on the toothbrush letting you know it's time to change it. When it starts to get about half to three quarters of the way gone, for most toothbrush manufacturers, they're now recommending you replace it. So there's different ways and different types. And this is why it's so important that I'm going to encourage everyone out there, go see your dental provider so that they can help you take your toothbrush with you and ask the dental hygienist or the dentist that you're with or even the assistant and say, is this, you know, a healthy toothbrush for me to be using? Am I using it properly? And, you know, have them help you with that. That's what we're for is to help you. And especially dental hygienists, we're preventative. We want to make sure we're pre helping you prevent any oral diseases from starting in your mouth. And if they have already started helping you with the process of getting them treated correctly. So that's, you know, what I'll say. I mean, I don't know exactly how long you've had your brush, honestly, Chris. Um, I'd have to look at it myself to see. And honestly, you could look at it and see, is the indicator part completely gone? Yeah. Or is yeah. it starting to spry out? Um, you know, sometimes that can help us as dental professionals when we see you to actually look and see how you're taking care of your brush, but also how you're taking care of your teeth. Are you pressing really hard? Um, I've had patients come in and, and people come in to the clinic and they've brought their brush and it's been a month and they're already starting to notice like their bristles are sprying out and it's probably because they're brushing decently hard or maybe they're brushing too much. You know, you can brush more than two times a day potentially and be putting pressure on the brush and you're actually brushing too much. So there's that. Why too. is the pressure important, Bridget? You've mentioned pressure a couple of times. Why why are you, you know, and it seems like it's 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 a real concern. Like you want to know how much pressure we're putting on. How does that affect um, our oral health? So I think overall the reason I say that so much is because you know, we have a lot of stresses in our lives today. And no matter what the stress, a lot of times you're putting excess pressure by clinching or grinding your teeth. And so we're seeing in general, I'd say in, uh, in people today, we're seeing wear on the actual tooth structure around the tissue line um, where people are getting recession. And sometimes that's related to them using their brush and actually just scrubbing away, right? There's different methods to brush your teeth. And as hygienists, we try to teach patients different types of methods that we have that will be custom to them. And the scrubbing motion a lot of times with what we originated with years and years ago is actually wearing away our tissue. So that's why I say if we're, you know, we're already a lot of times putting a lot of extra stress and pounds of pressure between our teeth when we clinch and grind and chew foods. So we try to look at that pretty heavily today and checking. I have recession myself. I have been having to remind myself and I'm a dental professional, right? Um, to start brushing on the inside of my mouth because I'm literally starting with my electric toothbrush and just like trying, you know, doing a motion versus letting it use, you know, do its thing, which is what electric toothbrushes are designed to, you know, you put them in and you move them around, but you don't need to do the scrubbing motion. You don't need to do the pressure. Um, your battery operated is, is very similar. Um, so let it do its work versus us feeling like we need to do it um, for ourselves. So.
I always have you to know, remind and this myself. Month of, <laughs> yeah, no, and, and and thank you for that because it is it is important. And then this month of February is actually uh, Gum Disease Awareness Month, and you know, I, I guess you know we just heard from from Bridget. It's it's important to understand that you know even those little things that we're doing that that pressure that we're putting could be, you know, impacting our tissue, our gums, could be impacting our mouth. We're thinking, and maybe you guys fall in the same group. I'm thinking, you know, the, the, the harder I brush, the cleaner my teeth are going to be. But it sounds like that's actually um, not helpful. It sounds like we're actually hurting ourselves by doing that. Um, so it's important to talk to our dental providers. It's important uh, to learn about proper care and 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 really be mindful of that and and try to just you know start incorporating that into our daily habits and our daily routine. When we talk about oral health, um, Bridget, we usually think I just need to brush my teeth. That's that's all it is. Brushing my teeth, you know, that's what oral health is all about. Is that true? Is that all it is? Well, of course, you're talking to someone in the dental world, and that is definitely not all it is. Um, so think about if you're eating an apple, for example, or you're eating any type of food that you're biting it into it, right? There's different parts of that food that are going to stay around the teeth and sometimes in between the teeth. So a lot of times, if you're just brushing, you are potentially getting off what you visually see right? With the teeth that you're seeing in your mouth, but you're not really getting off what's in between the teeth and has went into those little crevices. So we do recommend flossing or using like a water pick um, to go in between the teeth. You know, if you have areas that the actual tissue is gone between the teeth, which can happen, um, then we're, you know, wanting you to use additional items. The water pick is a fantastic one, but there's other options as well, like little proxa brushes, like little brushes you use in between the teeth. Um, so there's a lot of different dental-based, uh, you know, things that are in, a, in conjunction with a toothbrush that can really help you in getting in there. And I use a little, what's called a soft pick. It's like a little tiny um, brush pick at the end. And I use them in between my front teeth because I have little spaces um, over time that my tissue is not quite as tight in between and I get calculus present, which is like a buildup um, over time. And so that's why we get our teeth clean. So as hygienists, we tend to clean that off for you. We also help you look at what are you doing and how is everything looking in your mouth. Um, but that's going to be important that you not only add the step of just, you know, visibly brushing your teeth for about two minutes each time, twice a day. Um, to then also cleaning in between those teeth. So using mm -hmm. something like floss or um, a water pick or a little proxy brush or the soft pick type things like I use. You even talked about nutrition earlier. You know, when I said we can use our mouth as a window to our health, you you even brought nutrition and you said that it it's it's really connected. Um, what are you know some ways in which maybe we can start thinking about our mouth um, and I don't want to say an, an assist necessarily, but what are some things that may be red flags that we should be looking at for um, as we're going day by day to say, maybe there's something else going on because my mouth seems a little different. Maybe it could it be the smell? Could it be, could it be the look? Could it be our tongue? You know, some red flags that we could easily recognize and maybe prompt us to either and, you know, call a dentist. But should we go to our dentist or should we go elsewhere for that? Well, if, if it's something going on in your mouth, I'd say go to your dentist, right? Unless it's an emergency-based thing where you have a swelling, you're going to the hospital. And they do have dentists in the hospitals that are on call to help with that. So an emergency-based dental practice, if you're having pain or it's swelling, you want to get, you want to get checked. Um, so it's going to be important that overall, like nutrition-wise, you know, we're eating well, like, you know, thinking about a balanced diet, um, you know, we want to make sure we're drinking water. It's important to think about even the component of if you're drinking bottled water, that bottled water has a different pH than our typical mouth. So it will change the pH, which can actually um, sometimes increase people's risk factor for getting cavities because of the acidity of the mouth. So we're starting to explore all those things more in dentistry 
and help um, people in the community with that. Overall, I mean, nutrition wise, if we think about, you know, what is someone putting in their mouth, like sugary beverages, for example, if you're drinking a lot of, I call it pop or soda, however you call it, soda pop, right? Um, Coca-Cola classic, some place people call it, you know, so if you're drinking a lot of beverages that are sugary, um, even orange juice has a component with that. Um, it coats your mouth with, you know, the sugar based food then the bacteria that like to cause our teeth to break down and cause cavities, they like that. So they're going to, you know, stay in there and love to do what they, you know, what they do, which is create a cavity, create a home, right, in your mouth. Um, so I always, and we always are recommending patients, after you're drinking something like that, drink some water afterward right? Try to get that air, like the actual mouth to um, reduce that. If, you know, you're not going to be able to always brush your teeth after because brushing your teeth with the toothpaste is, you know, the more you do it also is not always good, but brushing twice a day, right? But then also rinse with some, you know, water. I drink coffee in the morning and I add a little bit of like a uh, sugary base cream in mine. So drinking water after that can also reduce the amount of stain that I'm going to have happen on my teeth, but also, you know, reduce the, the actual um, bacteria that like to colonize in that. I hope that helps. That, yeah, no, absolutely. That's really easy to remember. That's, you know, something that we can all do. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for that. I think we, we need practical ways in which we can take care of our teeth. Um, yeah. Wearing masks you know, has become a crucial part of keeping ourselves healthy, right, in times of COVID. However, mm -hmm. when we think of oral health, this new concept called mask mouth, which you introduced me to, right, has emerged. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I, I want to talk about mask mouth. I want to know what, what that means and, and, you know, what are we talking about when we say mask mouth? So this is something that, you know, is really pretty new because we're all wearing masks with COVID-19. I mean, meaning new, like within the last couple of years, we've been noticing happening and really um, think about we're wearing masks out in public or maybe even in your own house or out where you're going and you're wearing them a very long time. So even though like they're protecting us, which is a really good thing, we want to wear masks, right, to protect ourselves. I think and follow the CDC guidelines, but overall what we're seeing is that we're having patients with a lot more dry mouth. So that increases the amount of buildup that builds up in the mouth for some people. And we're also noticing that a person's mouth can be drier over time. So their salivary glands, you know, are working, but they're um, overall getting more of a dry mouth. Um, from breathing into like your mask area. So it's going to be important that we are drinking water if we can, right? Um, take a water with you. I have, I'm always carrying my, bo my bottle of water. People laugh at me about it, but I, I do. I carry my bottle of water. And then if I need to, I take a step away and, you know, take a drink and then put my mask back on. Um, just pull it down to do that. It's going to be important to keep, you know, that moisture in your mouth overall. But we have seen an increase in the amount of um, buildup in people's mouths for some people, not everyone. We're all unique. Um, but we're also seeing sometimes like lesions that are happening with COVID, patients that have had COVID and different things that are happening that um, might be attributed to something like um, mouth, you know, the, the mask mouth aspect of what they're saying today. Um, the other thing they've noticed is sometimes um, patients are having experience with uh, different things like it's drier in there. So then the bacteria like to eat away at the teeth a little more. Um, so, you know, cavities and things like that, um, they're starting to really come out with that might be increased based off of this. So we're still really exploring. Um, it's funny, I had someone talk to me the other day and uh, they're in the dental field. But, you know, you think about mask mouth and when we say that, it's like, well, what, what was, you know, is that because I'm wearing a mask now? I'm called a mask mouth, you know? And so they were really, um, you know, educating me on the aspect of, you know, like 
we're looking and seeing certain things in the dental world and and based off of what we're seeing that's happening right but then for them it was like well is it just because now i'm wearing a mask we're calling ourselves like mask mouth and i'm like no and they're like is it because now i can smell my breath if it's bad you know <laughs> versus before i couldn't and so it's kind of interesting um to hear everybody's perspective on like what does that mean um, but for us in the in the dental field, I think we're just starting to notice little aspects of when people are wearing masks for so long um, through a day, you know, it's going to it's important that we're starting to now look at that and potentially educating our patients about it, which, you know, everyone out there, right? Don't, you know, take a second away, get a drink of water, you know, keep yourself hydrated um, because you are, you know, breathing into a mouse mask all day. It's, it's kind of interesting because even in the dental field, we keep our mask on all day. You know, we're wearing an Elastomeric or an N95 mask that's fit tested, and we're wearing it the entire day minus a short window I get to eat lunch. And so I noticed a difference in my mouth, you know, being in clinic and, and working because I'm wearing something all the time. I don't switch out between you know, a patient with that, I switch and put on a different level three mask on top. So then you're having that additional, you know, filtration between you and, and the, the heat within that area. Um, you know, just the other day I'm in clinic and someone said, wow, your face around here is very red. And like, that's really normal for me now because wow. I'm constantly breathing. There's moisture within your breath. Right. And I'm constantly breathing within my my mask and then I've got other masks on top and a face shield. So it's, um, you know, it's something real that we're all kind of right. figuring out right now, not only everyone out there wearing masks, right. But then also professionals that are medical and dental, right. We're really having to, and those out and working with the community and having to keep our guidelines and keep everyone safe. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and I love that you said that because, you know, yeah, it is important. It is important to to understand that, you know, we want to continue wearing our mask and we want to continue uh, keeping everybody safe. But we do want to acknowledge that, you know, there is this other phenomenon that's happening and that a easy way that we can um, help our bodies just kind of like get used to wearing a mask is staying hydrated. That's simple. That's easy. Drinking some water. Um, you know, that might be uh, a way that we can stay compliant, stay safe, and at the same time, take care of our, of our oral health. I do want to ask, because I think I would be remiss, um, Bridget, if I didn't ask you about our breath, right? Because the biggest thing we talk about, another, another really big thing that we talk about uh, when it comes to oral health is our breath. And, um, Yes, as you said, once people start wearing masks, you know, the memes start coming out and rolling out and saying, now you smell your own breath, you know, kind of like yeah. jokes on you <laughs> kind of thing, right? What, you know, when does our breath um, take a particular smell? And should, be, should we be concerned? Is it, is it just because we're not brushing properly or could that be an indicator that maybe something else is happening and we need to pay attention to that? You know, you know, honestly, it's, it's interesting with the breath. Um, you know, we're becoming, I, I mean, I encourage everyone out there, right? Think about when you put on your mask, are you now smelling your breath? Are you able to, you know, you know, use your nose, right? And, and, and what types of odors are you noticing? Um, I think we've become as general humans, much more aware of our mouth and our breathing and what we're potentially eating because you know we have to have a mask on after that and we're going to potentially smell it i think of myself with onions right i don't get onions yes. on my sandwich <laughs> because i'm going to have a mask on for four and a half hours in clinic and i'm going to be smelling onions right so you're thinking yes. of all this stuff that might be you know, I'm like changing my diet based off of that because I know I'm not getting a break in between. I'm not, you know, I'm using, you know, normally like Listerine or I'm using a mouthwash or I'm brushing my teeth real quick before I put my mask back on. Um, but it's still the process of like, you know, you're like, oh my goodness, you know, I, I, I have to smell my breath now for hours and hours. Um, so some people, it might be something that is actually going on in your mouth, or we call it the oral cavity, right? With your oral health. 
It could be that you have cavities. It could be that you have what we call periodontal disease, which is part of the bone structure around the teeth and the structural portion, um, which is something that, you know, we as dental hygienists pride ourselves in being very um, well aware of and preventative in that end. We also have specialists out there that work with periodontal disease, but it could be something like that going on in your actual mouth, but it could also be digestive. So you have something like acid reflux, or you have some other type of, you know, medical type condition happening with the digestive tract. And then obviously you're going to want to make sure you're getting your physical every year with your physician, discussing things like that with them, and they can refer you to a specialist if needed in that area. So it could be different things. And don't be afraid to tell your dental provider, I'm noticing an odor coming from my mouth, uh, you know, and especially we're hearing that from patients more now that we have to wear masks, right? Because they're more aware of what you know, the smell is um, as well. Sometimes it's just what you ate. Like I had onions, right? And then I start to smell and I have all this odor with the onions. No matter what, even if I brushed or rinsed, I'm still getting some type of odor that obviously through my digestive base tract or what's going on in my mouth, right? So there can be different levels. And if you are noticing an odor, which most of us today, I think are much more aware, don't be afraid to talk to your dental provider when you go in the next time to you know, get your teeth cleaned or just get an exam or get a filling done. Don't be afraid, you know, just mention it so that they can help you investigate too. Um, and that's what we're here for, right? Don't be afraid to ask your yeah. medical provider um, because they can help you investigate. I mean, that's what it's all about. We just kind of investigate is something actually going on or is this just something that we, you know, you've been eating and garlic will do crazy things. I mean, one day I didn't even think and I had garlic on something with a salad I ate. And oh my gosh, that whole afternoon in clinic, not only am I like burping up right <laughs> garlic, but I'm smelling that garlic. And I felt like, wow, thank goodness my patients hopefully can't smell this, right? So things like, <laughs> you know, we eat all the time that it might be nothing, but then it could be right. that you do have something happening. And that's just like a first warning. And today we're more hypersensitive about it because we wear masks. And we smell our mouth. Right. With our nose. And you know, that gets me excited. <laughs> And that gets yeah. me excited, to be honest with you, because I can be more proactive about it, right? Things that maybe I wasn't noticing before. Now I'm wearing this mask and I am a little more attuned into it. So I can be proactive. I can go to my dentist. I can ask the questions and catch something early rather than later and have, you know, bigger bills, bigger things to deal with and and, and things like that. So I, I personally think that this is an opportunity. And and thank you for normalizing that and, and allowing us to say and actually pointing us pointing to us that it's important to come and actually say that, you know, I've been noticing an odor because it's, it's embarrassing and we don't want to say it. I know I don't want to say it. So I'm sure other people are feeling the same way, but it is important because it could, it could mean that there's something that uh, our dentist, that our provider, our physical provider, somebody else might need to look into and help us discover that may, there may be something else happening. So um, thank you for, for normalizing that and bringing that, that idea up front for everybody. I want you to think about too, though. I mean, this is important because today we wear in dental hygiene, in the dental hygiene program, like in dentistry out, we're wearing like level, you know, N95 masks with a face shield, right? We're not always able to smell your mouth because we are underneath other stuff too. So if you don't mention it to us and have open dialogue with that, we aren't always going to notice something either, unless we see something visually, right? And so if you're right. noticing something, you're with yourself every day. So that's going to be right. important to, to, you know, hopefully be vulnerable enough, right? Which is challenging for us all um, to just, you know, say something so then we can help you like investigate or look and go, well, you know, you do have cavity or you do have this going on. Let's see if we can't treat this. And if it gets better, we know what it was. If it doesn't, we got to keep going and, and figuring it out or realizing it could just be the, your norm, but now you're smelling it, you know, mm -hmm. and it is true. I mean, in general, I don't know how many of you out there, but like you put on a mask, a mask is supposed to go over your nose and your mouth, right? And there are some people that they're not wearing their mask over their nose or sometimes just over their nose and not their mouth. Um, and some of that could be because they don't like that 
smell or they, you know, have something going on. So, you know, it's important that we encourage people to wear things properly. But then if that is happening for you, reach out to your medical provider, your dental provider to figure out what's happening. So. Absolutely. Be proactive, be proactive. Your health, you know, the window to your health. I mean, this might be telling you that there's something that needs to be paid attention to, Mm -hmm. and it might just um, be that key to get healthy. Now, Bridget, I want to transition a little bit and and talk about some of the services, right? Because we're talking about all of these things and maybe somebody's listening and saying, well, I don't have a dentist or I don't know where to find a dentist. Well, here at HCC, we actually provide affordable dental hygiene care to everybody. So, I want to give you the opportunity to let everyone know about the Dental Hygiene Center here at Howard Community College. So I'm here because I'm a dental hygiene professor or faculty member that I'm, you know, and we have a dental hygiene program here. And what does that mean? Well, a dental hygienist is someone who's preventative, who is traditionally one of the first people in the back part of an office that you're going to see. They're you know, there to, you know, assess your mouth, evaluate things. Also then most of us, most people know us as we clean your teeth, right? We provide what's called a prophylaxis or um, if you need specialty, like what we call non-surgical periodontal therapy, if you have deeper areas where you've lost bone, we treat that. Um, We do many other things as well, um, but we traditionally are there to evaluate and speak with you about what's happening in your mouth and the dentist in the state of Maryland would come in and do your exam and they would diagnose anything going on. And so at the dental hygiene program here at Howard Community College, we have a dental hygiene center and there we provide dental hygiene based services. So it includes your exam, any x-rays or radiographs that you would need. Um, we provide a full assessment of what's happening with a head and neck evaluation, um, assessments within your mouth that hygienists have to learn how to do, right? And we're a program that's educating future hygienists that are licensed out there. So we um, have them go through all of the steps of evaluation and assessment. And then we have them form a treatment plan for you and talk to you about what you would need to have happen to get your mouth healthy or just to, you know, keep up with cleaning your teeth, getting any of the hard deposit off. Um, And so they do that. And they also traditionally put fluoride on your teeth so that we can try to help keep that enamel, um, the nice white stuff that we see, right, healthy. And so that's part of our dental hygiene services. Um, Once we have patients go through that process, if they're interested in something like whitening their teeth, we have students that talk to you about that and we do offer that service as well, traditionally in the second year program. Um, So those are the different types of services. We also have a full comprehensive exam that a supervising dentist does. And so if you have carious lesions or you have something going on that cannot be treated in the dental hygiene center, we're going to give you a referral so that you can either take it to your own dentist or we do have some community programs um, that do happen at times that give out certain types of free or reduced services for dentistry um, in our state. And also we have um, the University of Maryland Dental School that um, potentially can help. So we, our supervising dentists have information for patients that potentially don't have insurance or do not have access to care. And we try to help you find those services so that you can get treated. Um, what are the, you know, the, the, the requirements to become a patient? Can anybody walk in and, and say, I would like to become a patient? Is there a form? Do you need to register ahead of time? Let's talk a little bit about, you know, that process of how we can start getting services here at the dental clinic at HCC. Yeah, so anyone and everyone can come here. We do not accept insurance. Um, you do not have to have a social security number or paperwork or You know, we don't require anything as far as that aspect of um, our program. Um, We do have a Spanish speaking dentist and some folks that are Spanish based speaking. So we try to, you know, have that available if someone uh, is that's their primary language. We do have translator app based stuff that we've worked with as well and the students work with. 
Um, so we can try to be a community-based program. So we have everyone and every, anyone can come. You don't have to be from Howard County. You can be from other counties in the state, or we've had people even come from other states that have been patients for our students. So we ask that you just volunteer your time and you do have to pay a small fee um, to come to the Dental Hygiene Center. And obviously you're gonna spend, you know, some time with our students and, and most times you're gonna end up coming back for a second appointment or sometimes with our first years, a third appointment to make sure that we are providing you the best comprehensive care that they can and they're, as they're learning. So, so anyone Great. and everyone. Maybe Thank you, and, and thank you for opening to everybody and, and anyone that's listening, that's watching, for acknowledging the fact that, um, you know, there's no citizenship requirement, there's no insurance needed, that this is really a community program that's open for everybody who wants to come in. Maybe somebody's listening and somebody's thinking, but I'm going to be working with the students. And maybe they're not feeling super comfortable about that part, right? Because they're like, but they're just learning, right? And they, they could make a mistake <laughs> or, you know, something mm -hmm. could happen. How do I know that they're really looking and they know what to look for? So talk to us a little bit about, you know, how it works, how you guys are supervising, how we're making sure that our students, our students are learning, but at the same time, we are providing high quality services to those people who are choosing to come to the clinic. Yeah, that's a great, that's a fantastic question. And high quality is what we expect. So we want to make sure that you have a really good time. Overall, customer care is really important and we're teaching students here. So they go through a program the first semester that they're in their programming where they have to learn all the different steps that they are going to be providing through the care of being a dental hygiene student in our clinic. So they're learning about all the assessments that are required, how to intake medical history and talk to a patient with nonverbal and verbal skills. They have to learn how to use all of the equipment, which includes instruments in your mouth and what they need to do for each step of the way. Um, they're also having to learn today, we are digital. So we use digital radiography, which is your x-rays. And we also use digital charting where we are paperless at this point. So they have to learn all of the technology pieces and they're still learning that through their entire first year, but part of that is the application in clinic, right? As you learn how to do and maneuver everything and learn your steps. So someone like myself is gonna be in clinic with the students and we are um, each assigned to the students and we come and work with that student to do checks at different times with them. We are also always up and observing the student, making sure that they are working comprehensively to keep a patient, you know, as comfortable as possible and making sure that you are um, well taken care of. And I will say I'm very proud of our students. They work very hard and they have persevered and really put in the effort that first and in, in second, third and fourth semester as they're in clinic with um, patients to learn as much as they can and and treat patients the right way. We also have a pain management program at our school. So the first semester that they're in clinic, which happens to be their second semester of their first year, um, an instructor or the supervising dentist that's present, which is a, a dentist, um, we have three different ones, but they will um, be in the clinic with, you, with the students as well and doing medical history checks and they'll do your examination. Um, we make sure that we're with the students as we they go through. If they have questions, they have a, a method that they use with a card system. But we're also coming in to assess and help and make sure that they're, you know, they're the expert when they're working through things. And then we come in as the, the professional expert already licensed to make sure that everything is going the right way and that they are evaluating you accurately. And um, and so it's, you know, we 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 really, really strive to do our best for every patient. And um, we appreciate all of the community members and family and friends that can ever come in to support these students as they go through their requirements and, and making sure that you as a patient are taken care of is really, really important to us. So we try to do follow-ups with all patients um, and have assessment overall, making sure that everyone's comfortable and, um, and happy through the process as much as we can do, right? Um, so, 
we do, I mentioned the pain management. Um, if you have anything happen where, you know, you aren't comfortable and we need to have pain management such as local anesthesia or even just topical anesthesia. Topical is where we just place it over the tissues and it helps numb the tissues a bit. Um, or local anesthesia, which is where you actually have the teeth are completely numb with the tissue around them. Um, so if that happens and you're uncomfortable or you need to have a uh, you know, periodontal, what we call non-surgical periodontal therapy, or it's honestly known out there as a deep cleaning, um, we provide that service in the same charge as what you would pay just to come in, as long as it's on your treatment plan and diagnosed by the supervising dentist with the student. And in that process, if there is pain management that needs to happen with local anesthesia, our second year students in their first semester, they are taught local anesthesia with myself. And so they're able to then go ahead and uh, complete anesthesia with an instructor present. So someone like myself is already licensed in local anesthesia. So if it happens in the first year of the program when you're with a student, then traditionally the instructor will go ahead and, and do the local anesthesia or a supervising dentist will be there to do that. So we try to make sure that you are as comfortable as possible, just like we do in you know regular private practice or in any type of uh, dental setting. We want to make sure that we're taking care of our patients to the best we can. So I hope that answers and it's, your question. It, it sounds like, yeah, no, and it sounds like it's not just, you know, here's your student, here's your patient, go on and, and good luck. It, it sounds like, you know, there's always somebody supervising. So if you come to the clinic at HEC, it sounds like you're going to have multiple people taking care of you, right? One person is going to be there with you physically the entire time, but you have a whole team behind that student, mm -hmm. backing up that student, supporting that student. So, um, you know, you're not just with one person, you're with a whole team of people who are taking care of you. And I, I think that's, um, you know, that that's, yeah. it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like, okay, it's safe. Students can learn. So I'm helping them become professionals. But at the same time, I know that, you know, there's somebody else out there who is at the same time looking out for me. So it's 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 a beautiful relationship, in my opinion, where everybody wins. You said that there was a small fee for services. Is this a standard fee? Um, is it income based? Let's talk a little bit more about the the cost of the services here at the clinic. So we don't offer income based. Um, it is based off of a just flat fee. So if you're a Howard Community College student or you're a community member child, so you want to bring your child in or you are, you know, obviously you have to have a parent to come in or a guardian uh, to bring a child to a practice, then traditionally it's $10 and it's a flat fee. Um, if you are a Howard Community College faculty or staff member, then it is $15 flat fee to include all the dental hygiene services. Um, if you're a community member as an adult, um, so 18 years and older, you are a $20 fee flat rate. And that is um, including all the dental hygiene services. The only additional service that we have is the whitening. And we do have to charge for that because we have to buy all of the equipment and, and the kit and we give you that whitening material to go home with you. So um, I believe currently that is $25. And that has mm -hmm. to be where you went through the full, you know, comprehensive service of having the student do your profi um, or, you know, clean your teeth and things before we would have you do that portion. So that, um, that's what's currently recommended in practices um, to have a clean mouth before they do certain things. So we require that. But yeah, that's um, we we try to make it affordable. Um, it doesn't honestly cover our costs yet of the product stuff that we have to use, but it's um, so worth it for community members. And we really do appreciate your time because the students do have checks. And so a clinical time is traditionally about four hours. And so we would want you to come in and then have those assessments done with the student and the instructor and the supervising dentist as well. So it's very affordable, very accessible. Um, I, you know, I, I'm personally thinking I'm going to sign up <laughs> to be quite honest with you and bring my mom and my husband with me. So don't be surprised if you see me at the clinic this semester, Bridget. Um, 
let's talk about that, right? I I'm excited about this. I wanna I wanna take advantage of it. How do I register? Do I need to register? Is this a walk-in clinic? Um, let's talk a little bit more about that process. Where do we find that information? Okay, so you're going to find the information on the Howard Community College website. We do have a specific um, URL, so it's www.howardcc.edu backslash dental center. So on that area, you're going to see um, everything about the Dental Hygiene Center and they have it on the screen for you. Awesome, thank you. Um, and you'll be able to go there. You'll be able to see all the information about our affordable clinic. Towards the bottom, you're going to see a um, patient volunteer box that's in blue. And you want to click on that and complete the questionnaire. And that is your, it is, it's a decently long questionnaire. It actually is our medical history intake form. And that provides the receptionists all the information they need to schedule you. So they will be contacting you back to get you scheduled. I will say on that form, they actually ask your appointment date. On that appointment date, just put the date you're filling out the actual questionnaire. And if you want to, you can put reference um, as me, um, Bridget Holmes. That way they'll start to see too that, you know, it came through something like this. If you know a student in the program and you'd like to see them, you can put them as your reference in there. Um, and that way the receptionists then know who to schedule you with. If you don't know anyone in the program as students right now, that's fine. They're always looking for patients, especially our second year students um, who have higher student number requirements. And then the receptionist can then fit you with a student in their scheduling. We're currently open Monday through Friday in the spring semester here from, um, we have AM session and a PM session. The AM session with students starts at 8 AM. So we would expect you to be here at that time. Um, and then we have a 1 PM session um, in the afternoon. So it's um, morning and afternoon, Monday through Friday currently. And then the clinic runs uh, year round and it runs only for the semester. And um, when the patients come, what can they expect, right? How much time do they need to allot? Let's go. I know you kind of touched a little bit on that, but I really want to make sure that people have clear expectations and can plan properly when they come to our clinics. Oh, I hope you come. It would be fantastic to see everyone. Um, I mean, I just, we love seeing patients and we, we love that you're willing to have the experience with us. Um, so coming into the dental hygiene center, Traditionally, when you um, park, we give you a parking pass. We do have reserved parking spaces for our patients. So we give you a instruction how to get onto campus and a parking pass that you'll print out and put on your dashboard and park in our reserved parking spaces outside of our building. Um, you would then proceed and we give you directions into our dental hygiene center. It's on the first floor of the health sciences building on the Howard Community College campus. And you'll come in and see our receptionist and they'll get checked in. Traditionally, we have a pay online program at this point where we have patients only pay online. We want to reduce, obviously, you know, um, if you're not feeling well, we have you not come especially with COVID here, we make sure that, you know, everyone is coming in healthy. We do take temperatures at this point, as you start to see a, a student, they'll take your temperature and ask you COVID questionnaire, um, just to make sure that we're being safe and not exposing anyone in the clinic. We've been very, very fortunate to have, you know, no reported cases and being very mindful in our programming and what we do um, to follow CDC guidelines. Um, so when you walk in the door, traditionally, you're going to be met with a receptionist or an instructor that gets you checked in um, and they confirm that you have paid for your appointment. And then the student will come greet you and seat you in our clinic. And we do have pictures of the clinic on the actual website. So I um, encourage you to get familiar with that if you would like. And you'll come and the student will start with your medical history each time. They want to make sure that they're getting updated information about you and and so that they can take the best care of you as possible and each time they'll be able to meet with you and go through all the dental hygiene based steps that they have to do and i think it's amazing um, when i was in school 
I saw a lot of community members at my college and I even was a student volunteer myself to go in and be a patient. And I learned so much about my mouth that I just honestly never knew. And I think that's one of the things as an instructor I love is patients will learn so much about themselves. They had no idea. And they didn't really realize that when they went to their normal dental office, that this is something that the hygienist was actually checking. They just had no idea. So we do check everything and try to evaluate very thoroughly. We teach the students how to do that. It's just like, you know, when you're learning to walk, you've got to take baby steps. The same happens with students. And we have a lot of patients that have really gotten to know that process too, if you keep coming back and repeat. So we, we I would love to see all of you there. Um, we, our receptionists are fantastic. They will walk you through the processes to coming in. Um, and we just really are asking for your time when uh, the small amount of money that we do ask. So I hope that answered your question. Um, yeah, traditionally, the students are dismissed. yeah, they dismiss you and they walk you out actually to the front office and front office will, you know, then say goodbye or get you rescheduled with that student. Um, so that way you can come back for your next appointment, whether it be, you know, the next time you're due in the next semester. The one thing that you did ask about was timing. So this semester in the spring, we're open through Friday, May 7th, or sorry, May 13th, Friday the 13th, right, um, for our clinic. And then we actually don't traditionally have clinic in the summers here at our college. So we'll start back up in the fall of next year with three days of clinic running for our second year students. Our first year students are obviously learning the process and learning how to be a dental hygiene student in our clinic. So we open up for three days of clinic, Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays at the same times from eight to five, one eight o'clock slot and one one o'clock slot. Um, and then we then start back up with five days in the spring again. So we run on our semester schedules, which you can find on our Howard Community College website. They have the um, academic calendar um, sessions on there. Um, this semester though, will be open until May 13th. Um, things are scheduling up and we do sometimes end up with wait lists and we do try to accommodate as much as we can. Um, so if you have a chance in the next couple of days to try to put in your registration, that would be recommended just because as we start to get more in, our receptionists do fill our student schedules um, and we do have requirements they have to meet. So they have to do certain numbers of full completions through the semester where they have to see you and complete your entire treatment plan with you. So that is always the goal. So. Absolutely. So if you're if you're watching, if you're listening, take advantage of this. If you need to take care of your dental, your oral health, um, HCC can be your partner in oral health. So mm -hmm. just go to the website howardcc.edu. Um, if if you don't remember the site, the search bar is right there. Just dental clinic, oral health, and that will bring you to where you need to be. Uh, Bridget, we've talked about you know the services for our community. I think we would be remiss not to also mention you know for those interested in a career, for those looking for opportunities to become um, that professional. Let's talk a little bit briefly about you know the program here at HCC. Okay, awesome. Um, well, obviously I'm a little biased <laughs> because I work in the program, but we have a fantastic program here. Um, absolutely. We are working really hard. Now our students work very hard. It's a rigorous program. You're learning how to be a healthcare provider professional, and you're going into a licensed field, um, where you have to maintain licensure through the criteria for the individual states of the country. Um, obviously we geared based off of Maryland since we're in Maryland um, state guidelines, but um, it's, you know, you apply to the program through our admissions and advising area, and you would go to their area of the website to actually get application. We do have advisors for our health allied uh, health area that focus with dental hygiene. And so they can help you with looking at your prerequisites and the co-requisites that are required for our program. And once you get into the program, then you're spending most days here, or if not right now, remote, 
um, in lectures and in labs. Um, right now we're in person for lab and clinic. We're remote for most of our lectures. Um, obviously as COVID changes, then we transition back more and more. Um, but yeah, you're gonna spend a lot of time with us as uh, faculty members. Right now we have five full-time people, three of which are faculty, a clinical coordinator and a supervising dentist that's full-time. And then we have adjunct and um, other clinical instructors that are part-time and are receptionists. So we, you know, we're, we are really excited to have as many students that would like to come here um, to apply. And then um, hopefully, you know, as you go through, you can get into the program. We do also offer, which I would be remiss if I didn't say this, through admissions and advising, they have listed information sessions about our dental hygiene program. And traditionally there is two per semester. I will highly encourage you, if you are interested in coming into this dental hygiene program and learning about how you would get, you know, your application completed, the process of how it works to get into the program. We are a lottery based process, which is different than a lot of colleges with dental hygiene programs. Um, they can explain that to you in the information sessions. And there's two traditionally per semester that are listed on the um, Howard Community College website um, under the admissions and advising area. So I hope that gives you at least a little bit of information. Um, and that way, absolutely, if, you, know, yes. you want to try absolutely, to attend yes. an information session, you can. We also do put some information on our website, the Howard Community College website that I gave you guys earlier for a dental hygiene clinic, but it's predominantly for the clinic that that site runs. Um, the academic or the, um, uh, the actual admissions and advising area does most of the dental hygiene program information. So. Howard CC, that EDU seems like a good place to start your research, a uh, good place to go yes. and just start diving into that and, you know, getting a little more information. The information sessions, um, that's, again, Howard CC, that EDU, that little search by right there, that's where you could type that informa information sessions, and that will bring mm -hmm. you the dates, the information, um, you know, maybe you need to register yeah. to get the links and, and all of that. But um, by all means, like Bridget said, just, you know, be part of the program. If, if you're interested in, in, in a career in, in dentistry, this might be, you know, HEC could be that place where you can start that career today. If you want mm -hmm. to take care of your oral health, HEC can also be your partner in oral health, right? So there's many ways that you can interact with our program here at HEC. You choose, you decide, depending on where you want to go, we're here for you. We provide pathways for success. That's our mission. And that's what we're doing here in all the possible ways that we can. Bridget, I want to thank you for your time. We have about three minutes left. Um, but if we, if there was one thing, right, we've talked about so many things in, in this past hour, but if there was one thing that you wanted our listeners um, and our viewers to remember and to take away from our conversation today, what would that be? If you have anything going on in your mouth, go see a dental provider. Also, if you don't have anything going on in your mouth, Go see your dental provider, have them evaluate, make sure that you're getting your oral cavity cleaned, right? Giving you recommendations for your own individual mouth and what's happening for you. And I will encourage you, if you can't afford it, you could come to our dental hygiene center and this could be a first stop for you where you're getting a full examination plus getting that prophy or that non-surgical periodontal therapy that you may need. So we are an avenue for you and we want to be here for you as your healthcare provider for your oral cavity so or your mouth, right? So if you have questions, reach out. Um, anyone and everyone's welcome in our doors. We'd love to see you in here, and we want to provide you the best care that we can. So um, I hope everyone has a great day, and I hope everyone is um, staying healthy and happy as much as possible. The lesson that I'm taking or the message that I'm taking with me from our conversation today is to be proactive, right? And to 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 really look at our mouth and our oral health 
with a little more care and detail, right? Don't wait for the battery to stop working before you switch that <laughs> toothbrush, right? Don't do that. Let's let's start being a little more proactive. Let's start having those conversations, developing that relationship with our dental providers because it is important and it could hold the key to health overall for all of us. So Bridget, thank you so much for inviting us to the clinic, inviting us to go to howardcc.edu, finding out more about the program, becoming professionals if that's what we want, to partner with HCC for oral health and everything that involves that. So thank you for your time. Thank you for all the great information. And thank you everybody for listening, for watching, for sharing this with your friends and family. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, I am Cris Oviedo. Thank you.